Hi Tramps, today I'm going to be showing you a selection of microphones. Uh, so we've got five to show you. These are all ones that I have built or modified. Uh, one, two, three, four, and five. And I will take them apart and show you what is inside each of them. Microphone one. This started life as a, a Maplin Pro Sound, which was like an in-house brand, dynamic microphone. Now there are multiple kinds of microphones, um, and a dynamic one has got basically a magnetic core around which is a metal coil, and at the top is some sort of uh, disc of material we call a diaphragm. And the idea is as you talk, the diaphragm, which has the coil attached to it, moves up and down around the magnet, which generates a current uh, or a voltage, which is then detected and amplified by a preamplifier in the mixer. Um, and this actually was all that was inside that microphone. It was literally uh, the capsule here, dynamic capsule, and a switch. But the thing about dynamic microphones are that they're not that sensitive. Um, they are, don't give us, I don't think, as crisp response, uh, especially on the top end. Um, and they are, I find, a bit noisy. You have to amplify them a lot. So there's a different type of microphone, which is called a condenser microphone. And these come in two different flavours. There's one of these, which is what's called an electret microphone. And there's another one, and I'll have to show you a picture of this, which is called a true condenser microphone. And these both operate in the same principle. You have a Peter conductor and another conductor. The back conductor called the back plate is charged, and the front plate is connected to uh, a surface. As you talk, sound pressure waves move that surface, and that changes the capacitance of your device and because there's charge across it, that can be detected and amplified. Now in an electret mic, they use a piece of material which is charged up using static electricity. It so always has a charge on it, forever, or almost forever. Um, so you don't need to put a voltage into it, it's already charged. So if you stick another material up to it and you move it around um, with sound waves, uh, you can detect a signal. But they do contain an inbuilt uh, uh, transistor, most of them, um, or they connect them immediately to a type of transistor, so then they need some power to operate. The other form, the condenser, true condenser microphone, the back plate is not permanently charged, it is just metal, and you need to feed it with a rather high voltage so that it's got a charge, so that when your front plate moves, you've got uh, sound being produced. So, um, that's an electric capsule, so it has uh, a back plate that's permanently charged. It's in what's called a saddle here, so you can mount it. Uh, two wires coming out of it there, um, positive and negative. Um, not much else to say about that. So, um, this started life as a dynamic microphone, and I wanted to make turn it into an electric microphone, um, because I wanted more sensitivity and better higher frequency range. But I also wanted to have uh, the ability to move this microphone around, so to give it good handling capabilities. And, and in a dynamic microphone, the only isolation you've got is this rubber ring here, which is, which is a bit poor, to be honest, uh, and it wasn't the quietest to move around. Now, because in the case of electric microphones, you do need to put transistors and things inside the microphone. You need to actually put a little amplifier inside the microphone itself. And the challenge with something of this size was the fact that the body is quite small. Uh, so I had to get a circuit into this. So let's just screw off the head and I'll show you what I've done. So, just trying to run away. As you can see, stuffed in there is a circuit board. It's, it's sort of slightly tapered. Um, and on that circuit is one of two circuits that I tend to use for electric and condenser microphones. Um, this one is what's called a shops circuit. Uh, it's essentially three transistors. One uh, senses the, the output from the microphones, and then there are two that provide a, essentially a balanced output. 
uh, and it's all powered through what we call phantom voltage which is 48 volts coming in on two of the pins um, can, which you bridge across to the ground to, to, to find your 48 volts. Now this microphone I've used four very small electrets. These actually came from RS Electronics and I'll show you them. Uh, I've got one here, let me just get it out. So there's one there that I've slightly overheated and uh, the, the, the dust caps come off. Um, but what these are, are a tiny little version of this um, and they have a little transistor in effect. And the reason I've used four is because I want to increase the signal to noise ratio. Um, if you have the sound uh, coming in and striking four capsules, then it uh, increases the signal disproportionately to how much the noise increases. The signal's in phase, the noise is, 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 can be in or out of phase, so it's a great way of reducing noise. Now, the other side effect of this is if you put capsules in an array like this, you end up with some directionality. Sound waves coming in at the front hit the capsules pretty much all at the same time. Sound waves coming in at the side, there's a slight difference, and you get a bit of what we call um, comb filtering, and that reduces the amplitude of the sounds coming from the side. So it makes the microphone more directional. So what this is, is a PCB with four electric mics here, and uh, that is not connected to anything It's it, other than through these um, tiny enamelled copper wires. So if you can see there, I've just got enamelled copper wires and then it's sitting on a ridge of this stuff, which is some double-sided uh, sticky foam. Now the reason for this is the, the fine enamel wire is so fine that any vibrations on the body don't really get transmitted through such fine wires. So this means that uh, the capsules don't pick up very much vibration from the body. Uh, and I've just used the foam to clamp it in place so that doesn't flop about in the head there. So, I uh, don't think we can get the circuit out, now I've glued it in place. But um, So the principle of this is very simple. Uh, you connect it to phantom power, that fires up the circuit inside. These um, receive the voltage they need uh, to be able to work. And then you talk in through the top um, and it's amplified and sent out down the microphone line. Um, and it all fits into a body that was, just, that was originally designed to fit just that, which I'm quite impressed with. Now I have taken the switch off because I didn't really see the point of putting a switch on a phantom powered microphone. If you switch the thing on and off you just get a big funk as uh, capacitors charge and discharge. Uh, so that, and, and the nice thing about this mic is because of the way I've suspended that, those capsules on that little PCB with two very fine enamel copper wires, um, the handling is great. So it doesn't make much noise if you move it around and bang it around. So this kind of thing is really good if you want to be handling a microphone, say on stage or something, but you want the sensitivity and frequency response of a, an electret type of condenser microphone. So I would use something like this if I were doing uh, an outside broadcast radio show to a little auditorium, let's say, and I had participants that I wanted to hand the mic to, it would be great for that. This is the uh, four electret uh, microphone. That's the little tiny um, microphones, and this used to be a dynamic microphone from ProSound, which was a Maplin brand. Um, rest in peace Maplin uh, and I took out the dynamic um, insert and put in my own shop circuit with four electrets now because you've got four electrets in there there's a bit of directionality so if I go off axis it's like you can hear I disappear into the background um, there is an interesting sound coloration issue where if you go off to one axis it's sort of mid, mid um, sounds go off the other you get sort of the low ones and then you get so this is your lower off axis and then the, this one seems to be a bit more trebly and I think it's to do with the orientation that I've actually mounted the different electrets in now you can hear the handling noise is superb you know I'm banging the hell out of that mic and it, almost nothing is getting up to the capsule um, and this is because I've mounted it on those uh, two little fine wires uh, with a bit of foam padding so I think this is a great uh, sort of stage mic for use despite being an electret Microphone 2 is, uh, is the CC Alice microphone. So what this is, is a uh, 
BM900 body. The BM900 is a really dirt cheap mic that you can buy from um, that you can buy from AliExpress. You can pick them up for between uh, sort of five pounds and twenty pounds, and the prices go up and down and vary massively. When you first get them, they come with a very simple circuit like that. Um, which is the shop space circuit. Uh, this actually has four transistors, one, two, uh, five actually, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and what it does, it uh, gets the phantom power, uses its power, the internal electric um, electronics, etc., and to give the capsule some voltage, amplifies the audio and sends it back out the lines. So this would normally come in there, it's quite simple. Um, and then at the top in the basket would be uh, an electret like this. But I wanted to do two things. Number one, I wanted to uh, build my own um, circuit, my own shop based circuit with slightly higher quality components because these Chinese circuits are not very good for noise. They're a little bit noisy, they don't have very much filtering on. Uh, so I've built this, um, which is a, a standard shop circuit. You've got a transistor here, which connects is what the capsule connects to. Um, that is a FET transistor. Uh, the ones I am using at the moment, so I can fish them out, are these. These are the, I forgot the right one, um, these are the J113Z. Um, FET's quite hard to find. They're a type of transistor that has that can deal with very high impedances. Um, so the path when you, when you when a signal hits them, they don't draw very much current, and that's really important because one of these capsules, you know, it's, it's a capacitor, essentially a tiny capacitor. It's not capable of producing very much current. So you need a device that can deal with high impedance to amplify, and that's what a FET is very good at. FET transistor is quite hard to find, but the one that you can get at the moment that I've had good results with is the J113. They make an analog and a digital version of it. The digital version has got the suffix Z. From what I can tell, there is no difference if you're just using it for analog or audio. So you can just buy the digital one if you can't get the analog one. It just, I think it's to do with rise times of digital peaks. It's not relevant for what you're going to be doing. Um, there is, uh, I don't want to pick apart this circuit too much because it's quite complicated. I've done it on simple um, PCB matrix board where you kind of have to join the solder lines together. Um, and it does have a very high impedance part of the circuit. Um, I don't know if you can see here, but I've had to air solder the transistor, the FET transistor's gate to the uh, to this one gig ohm resistor, which is a bias resistor, uh, and the capsule output in the air. Because if you get any residue on this PCB and any aberrant conduction, it does ruin that that uh, the signal from the capsule. Air solder it, you get around that problem. But this isn't the only trick that this microphone has. This is an electric microphone, but it's using a slightly larger capsule because I wanted something that had a better frequency response and better uh, sensitivity to what would normally come with a standard capsule. So what I've done is I've put in some uh, capsules that you can buy from AliExpress for cheap, um, and I've put actually two capsules there in series, and we'll see this in a second. So these two capsules, um, there we are. This is my attempt at some shock mount suspending. All I've done is I've taken some conduit lid that I had spare, a bit of glue to turn it into a square window, and then there's this, this is more of this double-sided foam. I've stacked them on top of each other. Um, each one of these is an electret capsule and at the back of them I've connected them to the body using once again very fine enamel copper wire. Uh, the plastic um, ridge here, the plastic window, is mounted onto the base with again some more of that foam. Uh, and the idea once again is any vibrations here um, can transmit to the capsules in one of two ways, either via through the uh, plastic holder where there's one and two bits of foam in the way that absorb some of that vibration or up through the wires where you've got this very low mass enameled copper wire 
um, which doesn't transmit very well. Now, because it's enameled, it means that actually this, this wire, if, you, if it were to touch something else, is non-conductive uh, on the edges because it's coated with an insulating layer. So what you have to do is sandpaper off just the, uh, this enamel right at the bit you're about to solder to connect it to. Um, so you just simply cut a length, sandpaper the edges off, solder the edges, uh, and that's how it's done. Um, so this is essentially a dual capsule micro electric microphone with these capsules here, which you can get for about five pounds from AliExpress. I actually managed to get a four for uh, I think a total of about sixteen pounds, so I got a bit of a bargain there. Um, and they are more sensitive, very similar frequency response to this though. Um, and we'll hear how that sounds in a sec. So put that one to one side. Microphone two. Uh, so this is the dual electret, the large goldish looking um, electret capsules. I've put one on top of the other and I've built my own shop circuit with it. Um, you can hear that it's a bit more directional in the up down direction than it is in the left right direction. And that's just simply because when you mount capsules on top of each other, uh, you parasitize the um, up down acceptance angle. Um, it's a bit warmer than the tiny electrets in microphone one. Uh, some of the downsides though, because I've built my own shop circuit, it is picking up a bit of room noise, uh, sorry, a bit of uh, electrical noise in the background. I can just hear it from some of the USB lines and perhaps it's not strong enough in the base because I've only used quite small capacitors in there. Uh, this is how it sounds in the reverse side and this is how it sounds in the front side. Decent output level. Um, you know, this actually is a pretty good everyday mic, handling wise. Not as good as my previous one. It's the uh, square of plastic uh, with foam pads at the bottom and foam pads to hold the two microphones in. So there you go, that's mic two. Now we start to get a bit more ridiculous. How far can we go with this multi capsule idea? Now, when you add more capsules, uh, you increase the sensitivity. You but you can also affect the directionality because um, sound can strike capsules at different directions and you can hit one before the other and if it's not all hitting them at the same time generally speaking you're going to get some destructive interference going on. So I thought I'd take it to the extreme. This is an 8 capsule uh, electric microphone. The grill here which I looks beautiful, I shit, um, is some aluminium um, body work mesh repairer for cars. So you can just, uh, it's this kind of stuff that if you've got a rust hole in your body work, you put some aluminium on the inside and somehow put some resin, I don't know what they do. Um, but it's great for, for prototyping mic stuff. You need to have an earthed shield around your capsules because if you don't, they just pick up um, mains hum from everywhere and a load of um, noise interference from all your electronic devices. So this is a way of putting in a Faraday cage. The only thing that gets through isn't electromagnetic interference, it is sound. Right, so um, what we've done is I've taken every single one of these large uh, condensers that I had, uh, sorry, large electrodes that I had, and slap them together um, in series. And then I've taken all of the, multiple of these small ones that I've acquired and put them together again in series. And uh, that's the beautiful wiring on the back. Um, because I was concentrating on the capsule, what I've done is I have just used a standard uh, Chinese, um, this is the standard circuit, but with a couple of little modifications on it. So this is essentially a version of, of, of that circuit that I showed you with. That's what the microphone originally came with. My modifications are, number one, I've added a resistor. Uh, number two, I've added a capacitor. And those two together form a low-pass filter um, for the bias voltage that supplies this transistor. Basically, what it does is it takes noise out of the power so that um, you don't, this microphone's not as noisy. And then here I've replaced a diode with a chunky one. This is a Zener diode, and we use it for setting the voltage um, that this transistor should be supplied at. 
Um, originally, they had a noisy 11 volt one in there, and I've replaced this with a much less noisy 5.1 volt. Um, and the compensation for this is that because there's so many capsules, there's four capsules as opposed to what used to be one. Um, so there's sorry, there's there's eight capsules, four and four in parallel. Um, that the signal from the capsules is so much higher, we quite simply do not need as much voltage bias on that transistor to get the output. Now this microphone is batshit crazy. Um, apart from being extremely sensitive, it's also very directional um, because it has so many capsules in it. Uh, it's got a very narrow sweet spot cone um, and we'll show you that uh, in a sec. So yeah, BM900, uh, that's how it started life, took the circuit that was in there, put some mods on it, and then built this ridiculous array of electric microphones um, with the result that I've ended up with a super sensitive, very directional, bonkers looking uh, microphone. It's the kind of thing that, you know, you might want to I don't know, you could probably point at some birds across your garden and, and listen to them or spa on the neighbours or something. It's a bit like a shotgun microphone um, in terms of directionality, but uh, it's, it's uh, probably slightly louder output, let's say. Microphone 3. <laughs> This, this is, the, I've got to speak really quietly. This is the experimental mic. I think I'm going to have to bring a pop filter in. Uh, this is the experimental mic uh, that I made with eight different electric capsules in there. Um, it's extremely loud. Um, I've turned the gain all the way down and it's still too loud. Uh, I'll show you how directional it is if I go off axis and just speak like this. There you go, it disappears. Uh, and I'm back, I'm back in the room and then I've disappeared again. Uh, and now I'm back, uh, I'll go off to one side and then I go off to the other side. So it's pretty directional and um, because it's so sensitive, um, <laughs> you, you, I can, if I point at a, a, a room noise source, uh, you can hear both how directional and sensitive it is. So I'm going to point it at my computer. My computer's a meter away from that microphone. Um, I, I basically, I've invented a shotgun mic that instead of being very long is kind of wide. Um, I can't think of many uses for this other than as a shotgun microphone, um, where its bulky size makes it slightly impractical. Um, I mean, maybe if you were recording a bird across the other side of the garden, it would be useful. Um, frequency response gets up to about 15,000 uh, because of the limitations of the electric capsules. Um, so, oh yeah, the head basket uh, is, a, is, a, is a thing of beauty. Handling noise is rubbish. I haven't, I've done hardly anything to suspend that. I've literally just put one piece of adhesive foam to stick what is otherwise a lashed together with tape array. If I had a 3D printer, I might have done something a bit more impressive. Now we're getting on to the big boys. So they were both electric. Well, they were all electric microphones, those three microphones. Um, remember I said there was a different capsule that exists? This is the true condenser capsule. True condensed capsules, like electric, are based upon the capacitor principle except instead of having a back plate that's statically charged, it's always got charge on it, it's just a piece of metal that you ram a ton of volts into. Uh, and this is where things get a little bit exciting. Okay, so, uh, circuit-wise, there is two halves to this circuit. One half is standard shops circuit, which is where you have a transistor to receive the... I need to point to this. Transistor to essentially... Uh, receive signal from the capsule. Once again, I've used a J113Z FET. There's an air soldered gap here that connects the capsule to the transistor to a, a one gig bias resistor. 
Uh, and then there are two other transistors, some PMP transistors, which essentially uh, take the audio that's produced and pump it out onto the um, XLR lines. There's also a bit of machinery to tap the 48 volts and generate 12 volts from it. But there's another half to this circuit, because remember I said that this is a true condenser capsule. You need to generate a high voltage, and by that I mean 50 plus volts, uh, in order to bias the back plate to give the back plate of the capacitor some charge otherwise it's not going to work so this is what the other part of the circuit is I'm just taking the head basket off so you can see what I'm dealing with here um, so if we take this very carefully off now this I have to say is quite lousily uh, fitted on and I'm hoping I don't break it but if I do no big problem because it's not a very good microphone okay Right, oh god, that is falling apart in there. So this is what we call a true condenser microphone um, capsule. What you've got is a brass backplate, this brass ring here, um, and it's a solid piece of brass. Um, there are these holes drilled on the back, and that is designed to let sound through from the back in a delayed fashion that makes the capsule directional. Uh, what basically happens is um, sound hits the front and it uh, looks at the pressure gradient, the difference between the front and the back, um, because you've put holes in the back, so it's a way of basically making it directional. And on the front is a disc of plastic called mylar plastic, high tension plastic, with a fine coating of gold and one of the connections here is uh, to the back plate um, so this bit of plastic is sitting just in front of this back plate this brass back plate and the other connection is to the actual gold surface of the capsule um, the gold's on the outside and that way you don't get shorts and things um, and the idea is that sound comes in moves the uh, plastic, the back plate is charged up to, in this case, 50 plus volts, and that generate that acts as a capacitor, and you can sense the difference in capacitance, amplify it with a, a transistor and an output stage, and there you go. To generate the voltage to charge this back plate, we, uh, I use an inductor-based circuit um, so this is two inductors, a transistor and some switching diodes and what this does is it generates an oscillation um, and what you do is you use that to charge up capacitors higher and higher and then you tap a DC signal off that. Um, you don't really need much current from the high voltage because it's literally just making the capsule charged um, so it's a very good way of generating high voltages that um, are such a low current that you're not going to shock yourself with it or you can't really, you, you might feel it but it's certainly not going to do you any harm. Now this does generate, because you've got two inductors, this does generate quite a lot of noise but the noise is in the order of the megahertz frequency range, well above hearing. Uh, I've also taken steps to, I've put some filtering in, that's what this big capacitor is, um, so it's the filtering of the uh, high frequency bits afterwards and these inductors are actually shielded. Uh, there's also a, you can't really see it, but there's a um, earth line between the inductor bits and the um, audio bits to stop any spillover. So that's a true condenser capsule. Um, by the way, this line, this, this here is some of the shielded signal cable that I've got. It's just to hop um, the audio across the board to the output bit and get it around these capacitors. A bit of a hack, I know, but it's a single-sided board. Um, with the exception of this component. Um, so this was the first con true condenser microphone that I built and uh, it performs really quite well. Um, there is a bit of a problem with some occasional spurious rumbling sounds which I haven't managed to get to the bottom of. Capsule suspension is basically a bit naff to be honest. It's, it's layers of this foam stuff uh, double-sided foam, which is why the capsule was sort of half falling over when we lifted it off. Um, but, you know, it does the job. It's got reasonable handling, um, but I wouldn't ever use something like this, which is super sensitive uh, on anything other than a shock-mounted 
stand. So that's my first ever condenser microphone that I built. Microphone four. Uh, this is the first true condenser microphone. I'm just going to put a foam on it. So this is one of the uh, true condenser capsules. So that remember the circuit was half of it was a shop's uh, audio amplifier circuit and the other half of it was the high voltage generator for the capsule. Um, the mounting of the capsule is a bit clumsy. It's uh, just three bits of adhesive foam and if you leave it in a drawer, you find that the capsule will tilt depending on the orientation you left it in. So that definitely does need work. Certainly not as robust handling as I would have hoped. However, the sound is brilliant. Um, it's nice and bright, as these capsules tend to be. It's it full range. You get all the way down in the bases, all the way up to the um, trebles. Um, does sound a little on the bright side, so that's typical of these capsules. Uh, I'm a bit annoyed about the amount of uh, electrical interference noise it's picking up. It, it's quiet, but it's not as quiet as I would have hoped. Um, I think part of that is because you've got a bit of stuff bleeding over from the high frequency board, um, and I just wonder whether it needed a bit more to suppress the uh, RF that's coming in uh, via the XLR. I have put 22 nanofarad uh, um, caps, but they're on the board. They're not right down at the plug. Um, but anyway, it's pretty usable. Um, if this would get sitting in a shock mount, I think this would be good handling-wise. Pretty good. Um, and that's thanks to those three strips of foam, but they are also the reason the capsule is wobbling around. And the last thing you would want is the capsule banging in and, and damaging its membrane. Uh, so yeah, it needs a bit of work on the capsule. Um, but otherwise, it's a brilliant sounding microphone, slightly high noise floor for my liking, but still pretty damn low. Um, at this point, things started getting interesting um, because I found a brilliant microphone uh, hobbyist site online and I ended up uh, discovering a uh, chap who has designed uh, a different type of circuit that, unlike the shop circuit, um, uses a chip, uses a, a, a an operational amplifier. Um, now, the, I, I can't stress enough how revolutionary this, this is, um, because one of the problems when you're powering a microphone through phantom power is you don't have many, uh, you don't have much current to play with. You've got 48 volts, but you've got next to no current. I think you can tap an absolute maximum of 14 milliamps off it. So all of this circuitry has to run on uh, maximum 14 milliamps. So you can't go putting any power hungry components in there. And one of the problems with operational amplifiers is generally speaking, they're designed for power hungry workloads and they themselves aren't, are a little bit power hungry. The other problem with them is if you remember, I said that you've got a tiny capacitor um, that's made from two charge plates and sound waves move one of them and you detect that and you amplify it. But because it's such a small capacitor, it's the, the signal is, is, isn't capable of generating very much current. So you can't just go and feed this into something that's trying to suck a load of current because um, you're going to end up with essentially none of the, the signal just, just is, is diminished. So you have to have what's called a high impedance um, amplifier. And again, operational amplifiers used to be based upon standard transistors, but there are some around that are based on FET transistors, and this is one of them. Um, I'm just going to show you, you won't be able to read that, um, but this is the a type of operational amplifier called the OPA1642, and it's a double operational amplifier. Now, clever thing about these is, apart from there's two of them in there, um, they draw very little current uh, internally, which means you can use them on uh, off, off phantom power. And uh, the additional bonus is the input stage is a FET transistor, so itself is mega high impedance. It's exactly what we need um, for for uh, phantom powered condenser microphone or a phantom powered electric microphone. Um, so that's what this circuit is all about. In fact, this, this, you've got the ability to have two. And this is to do with multiple capsules, uh, microphones, which um, we're not going to go into today. Um, but again, if you want to use one of those proper capsules, one of, let's just have another look again. 
you want to use one of these things, um, these, which, which are beautifully sounding, as opposed to one of these things, you need to be generating a high voltage to charge the back plate with. So that's what this other circuit is here, which is uh, a genius voltage multiplier, um, which uses a uh, hex inverter. Um, these are like six knot gates in one chip. Uh, and it's done in, it's architected in such a way that the input voltage gets multiplied by six. Um, so what we do is we end up putting 12 volts in and out the back we get um, six times 12, 72 volts or so. Um, so it's a dual PCB uh, circuit. I've just finished this one off today actually. Uh, so here is the microphone, um, sort of the amplifier circuit, receives phantom vo voltage, uh, phantom power. There's a little Zener diode in there that converts it to 12 volts, and then it sends that 12 volts onto this board, multiplies that up to 72 volts, and uses that to charge the, the back plate of the capsule. Meanwhile, we use the 12 volts here to power the operational amplifier which is buried inside on the inside face so we're looking at this side uh, the operational amplifiers where IC2 would be um, and that's what the capsule connects to uh, I'll show you the capsule it's very similar to the other ones that you've seen um, but what I have done in this situation is I've actually gone and bothered to put a, some proper mounting in uh, well proper is stretching the term a bit um, now you can buy, although they're quite hard to come by, plastic saddles for these capsules, um, but the ones that I kept finding didn't actually fit onto this platform very well. Um, so what I've done is I've lashed my own, and these usually come, when you buy one of these capsules from China, they usually come in a box like this. Um, so what I've done is I've got my Dremel on that box and basically machined out a little, by trimming all that crap off the edges apart from the bottom lip, I've machined out a little holder, a um, bit of tape that's just touching the ring to hold it in place. The front of the capsule's here. Once again, that is a gold-coated um, mylar bit of plastic. Uh, and then the um, back plate ring is here. And once again, it's the high voltage generator, in this case the um, hex inverter multiplier that charges the back plate and the uh, signal is tapped from the front diaphragm and goes into the OPA amplifier. We use one, this is a dual amplifier, so there's two operational amplifiers in there. We use one to uh, generate, uh, to get current gain and generate what we call the hot signal the positive signal and then the other one we act as an inverting amplifier to generate the cold signal that gives you a balanced signal which is what um, uh, you want to put down an XLR cable it's to do with noise um, you can just see at the bottom here where we connect to the XLR um, cable I've just put in some 22 nanofarad um, capacitors and this is just to filter out any radio frequency noise that tends to blight these things um, and this is a brilliantly performing microphone. These capsules are superbly sounding. Um, they give really good, high, bright um, top end amplification, or, or, or they detect high frequency sounds beautifully. Um, but they can also go right the way down to the bass level uh, and sort of go down to even 10 hertz. So they can detect um, bassy booms as well. And once again, for handling purposes, I have put the capsule uh, on some of the uh, foam so that uh, noise transmitted through the body doesn't reach the capsule very well. Uh, the capsule did come with its own wires, which are relatively low mass, not quite as low as those, um, low, not quite as low mass as the enameled copper wire that I love. Um, so I've lost the holes now. Um, but low enough that they do an okay enough job at um, they do an okay enough job at uh, attenuating any handling sound. Let's see if they debris now or something. Find the hole. Where's it gone? There we are. 
So that is microphone number five, a true condenser microphone built around uh, two PCBs, two circuits by a guy called Jules, DJ Jules from Sound Sleuth Labs, uh, an operational amplifier, absolutely genius um, circuit, all powered by Phantom Power, and a hex inverter based voltage multiplier, low current. Um, which means you can power the whole thing off phantom power. And we'll hear what it sounds like as well. Microphone number five. Just get my phone. So this is another one of the... uh, true condenser microphones this time it is using a slightly different capsule i thought i wanted to try a slightly different it's from a different factory same kind of design where you've got a double brass back plate um, with a center terminated membrane Um, but the circuitry on this microphone is the operational amplifier based circuitry the one four the one six four two chip um, designed by jules from sound sleuth labs and the capsule is uh, charged using that wonderful uh, hex inverter circuit, um, that sort of voltage multiplier. Um, so it's really low noise. Um, I'm really impressed with this one. The the yeah the operating noise is is rock bottom. Um, if I sit it on a stand, turn the gain up, I, I can't hear uh, any uh, any electrical noise above what the natural room noise is so it's you know it's good enough for my purposes directionality wise it's just a standard uh, unidirectional capsule so it does exactly what you think i haven't really done anything to modify it um now the handling wise it's a little bit noisy and that's because we've only really got one strip of foam between the saddle and the uh, rest of the body so you really want to be using this microphone in a uh, shock mounted stand um, it doesn't sound quite as high end as the other capsule. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why that is, but um, it's still producing. It gives a nice flat response, um, and I would have absolutely no hesitation whatsoever to put this in a radio studio. It is by far good enough, and certainly better than a lot of the other stuff that I've seen. Um, so you know, this this would do me as a primary uh, microphone for video conferencing or anything where I could stick it on a um, stand with a shock mount.